Imagine you are listening to a song. The sound you hear is complicated because the vibrations from the drums, guitar, and singer are all mixed together into one big messy wave, and that wave hits your eardrum. Now, imagine you have a special ear that can separate the sounds. That ear can tell you, wait, that one big sound is actually a combination of a simple drum beat, a simple guitar sound, and a simple smooth voice. The Fourier series does this exact same thing in math. It takes any complicated line or shape that repeats itself like a complex sound wave or an electrical signal and says, this complicated shape is just a mixture of many simple, smooth, and symmetric waves. These simple waves are called sine and cosine waves. By mixing only these two waves, we can build almost any repeating shape in this world. Now we use the Fourier series because it makes tasks like filtering out noise, compressing data, solving physical equations that describe waves or heat, and detecting features in signals much simpler. Okay, before we move forward, let us understand a few terminologies. This is the graph of the sine of x with respect to x, and this is the graph of the cause of x with respect to x. The distance on the x-axis after which the shape repeats is called the period. For sine of x and cause of x, this repeat distance is 2 pi. That means if you look at the graph between 0 and 2 pi, and then again between 2 pi and 4 pi, both shapes look exactly the same. So we say the period is 2 pi. Now let us take a slightly different wave, sine of 2x. What happens here? The wave moves faster because the number 2 in front of x makes it complete two full up and down cycles in the same space where sine of x completed only one. So the period of sine of 2x is not 2 pi anymore. Instead, the wave finishes one full cycle in half the distance, so its period is pi. In other words, sine of 2x repeats after pi distance. Next, let us look at sine of 3x. In this case, the wave moves even faster. Within 0 to 2 pi, it completes three full cycles. That means the length of one cycle is shorter. The period now is 2 pi divided by 3. The same logic works for cause waves. Cause of x has period 2 pi. Cause of 2x has period pi. Cause of 3x has period 2 pi divided by 3. So in general, if we take sine of n times x, or cos of nx, then the period becomes 2 pi divided by n. The larger the number in front of x, the shorter the period, and the faster the wave repeats. Now that we understand period, let us connect it to another very important idea called frequency. Frequency is simply the opposite of period, or 1 over period. So, from the examples we just saw, sine of x and cos of x repeat after 2 pi, which means their frequency is one cycle in 2 pi distance. In the same way, sine of 3x and cos of 3x repeat after a period of 2 pi divided by 3, which means inside the distance of 2 pi, they complete three full cycles. So their frequency is three cycles in 2 pi. This means this 3 here, before x, shows that the frequency of the wave is 3 times the frequency of the sine of x. The lowest one, sine of x, or cos of x, is called the fundamental, and the others like sine of 2x, sine of 3x, and so on are called harmonics, each one being an exact multiple of the fundamental frequency. Now let me tell you about the amplitude of a wave. In a wave like A sine of x, the letter A is called the amplitude. The amplitude tells us how high or how strong the wave goes. For example, if A is 2, the wave rises up to plus 2 and goes down to minus 2. If A is 1, it rises only to plus 1 and down to minus 1. So, the amplitude controls the size of the wave. 
while the sign of NX controls its shape and frequency. Similarly, in a cause wave like A cause of X, A is the amplitude. Now what we do is make the infinite series using combination of cause and sign like, start with a constant A zero, then add A one cause X, and then add B one sine of X, where these A one and B one are the weights or coefficients that decide how much of cause X and sine of X should be present. Then we add A two cause of two X and B two sine of two X with their own weights and so on for A3, B3, and infinitely further. Each term represents a harmonic, and the coefficients tell us the amplitude of that harmonic in building the full wave. If the value of a coefficient is small, or the amplitude is small, like if A3 is very small, then the contribution of cause of 3x in shaping the signal will also be very small, almost negligible. On the other hand, if a coefficient or the amplitude is large, then that particular harmonic will play a strong role in deciding the shape of the final wave. This way, by looking at the coefficients, we can immediately tell which harmonics are important and which ones hardly affect the signal at all. Now let me show you some magic. Write 4 over pi first. Now inside a bracket, write the sign of x. We get this curve. You can also see this square waveform in a dashed line, which is our target wave. Also note that this square wave has a period of 2 pi, right? Now add 1 over 3 times sine of 3x. We get this curve. Then add 1 over 5 times sine of 5x. We get this. Then add 1 over 7 times sine of 7x, and so on. Keep doing this forever. Oh my god. Can you see what this curve is approaching? Yes, it is starting to look exactly like a square wave, jumping sharply between plus 1 and minus 1. This is the true power of the Fourier series. But you might be wondering, how did we get this formula? This is where calculus comes into the picture. First, we will define our signal as a square wave function like this. For x between 0 to pi, it has some amplitude a, and for x between pi to 2 pi, it has some amplitude negative a. So we'll integrate over the interval 0 to 2 pi. First, we will calculate a0, or the constant term, which is just the average of this signal over one period for which we use this integral. You know AC and DC currents, right? We also call this A0 as the DC component of the wave. First, we split the integral into two parts, one from 0 to pi, where the signal is positive A, and the other from pi to 2 pi, where the signal is negative A. In the first part, the value of the signal is constant at A, so when we integrate over that interval, we just multiply A by the length of the interval, which is pi. In the second part, the value of the signal is constant at minus a, so integrating over that interval gives minus a times pi. Then we add these two results together, which equals zero. This means a of zero is zero. Now we move on to the other coefficients, like a of n for cause waves, which is given using this integral and it represents the average of the original signal f of x times cos of n times x over one full period. We again split the integral into these two intervals. The first contribution is a times the integral of cos of nx from 0 to pi, and the second contribution is minus a times the integral of cos of nx from pi to 2 pi. The integral of cos of nx with respect to x is sine of nx over n. So when we evaluate the first contribution, we get a times this, and when we evaluate the second contribution, we get minus a times this. Now substitute the boundary values. Sine of any integer times pi is zero, and sine of zero is zero. So each bracketed term becomes zero. Hence, a of n equals zero for every integer n. Awesome! Similarly, we can calculate b of n for sine waves, which is given using this integral. You know the first step. 
Split the integral into these two intervals. The integral of sine of nx with respect to x is minus cos of nx divided by n. So evaluating the first contribution gives a times this, and the second contribution gives minus a times this. On simplifying the signs and grouping the boundary terms, we get a over n pi times the bracket containing minus cos of n times pi minus of minus cos of 0 plus cos of 2 pi minus cos of n times pi. We know that cos of 0 is 1 and cos of 2 pi is 1, while cos of n times pi equals minus 1 to the power n. So after substitution, we get this, which then becomes 2 times 1 minus of minus 1 to the power n. When n is even, that means n equals 2, 4, 6, and so on, the term minus 1 to the n becomes 1 itself, and thus b of n becomes 0. When n is odd, that means n equals 1, 3, 5, and so on, the term minus 1 to the n becomes minus 1, and thus this term becomes 2. So b of n becomes 4a divided by n pi. This shows that only the odd harmonics are present in the Fourier series of the square wave, and the even harmonics vanish completely. So now, if we take the amplitude a as 1, we get 4 over pi times sum of 1 over n times sine of nx, or this, which is exactly the sum that I have already shown you visually, step by step. This is what the Fourier series is all about. Now let me know in the comments, what will be the Fourier series for this sawtooth-like wave? Note that we can represent this wave using the f of x equals ax over pi for x going from 0 to 2 pi. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Also, you can support my channel by joining our community and becoming a member. So good.